Hello and welcome to space. Now I'm in the UK in one of the areas which was hardest hit by the recent flooding and a lot of the management of that disaster happened using information from satellites. But how? We'll find out, but first some other news from the universe this month. It's confirmed Russia's first new big rocket since the Soviet era, called the Angara, will have its first test flight this year. It's a heavy lift launcher burning liquid oxygen and kerosene. Construction of the world's largest optical telescope in Hawaii has been given the go-ahead. The 30-metre telescope will observe exoplanets and the early universe. And ESA's German astronaut Alexander Gerst is on his last leg of training before blasting up to the ISS in just 10 weeks' time. Satellites give us huge amounts of information on how to deal with disasters like flooding. But how does it work? Let's find out. Flooding affects thousands of people every year across Europe, and this year one of them just happened to be a flood scientist, Spanish researcher Javier García Pintado. This is the bank of the Thames, and this area was largely affected by the recent flooding. Specifically, in this little bit of land, we're a tiny bit higher and we didn't have any problems, but our neighbours around here certainly did. Javier knew his young family was safe at home because he could count on his expert knowledge. His day job is using satellite data to improve flood models. As hydrologists, we were pretty confident that this property wouldn't have a problem, and we told our neighbours. Not everyone has a neighbour as knowledgeable as Javier, nor were they as lucky. The whole area west of London was affected as England and Wales lived through their wettest winter in almost 250 years. Across England, 6,500 homes were flooded. The British government looked to space for help. Satellite images showed the extent of the disaster. However, those images weren't available quickly. In fact, they took around 30 hours to be processed. Javier and his colleague David Mason at the University of Reading can use that data for post-flood analysis. But they want to go further to get information faster and be one step ahead of the floodwaters. Just like they've improved weather forecasting, they know it's going to rain pretty accurately these days, up to three days ahead. Now we are hoping to get um, flood forecasting uh, more accurate in the short term. That vision of flood forecasting will move towards reality with the launch of ESA's Sentinel satellites. They promise a real step change in disaster monitoring. The first, called Sentinel-1, will launch in April. When we get to the Sentinel-1 satellites, they will be able to give us imagery in near real time, an hour or so after the download to the ground station. And then you get to a situation where you can use this sort of imagery in a, a flood prediction mode, in a flood forecasting model. The Sentinel satellites don't just promise a deluge of data on flooding. The fleet comprises seven different satellites and each will scan the Earth in different ways. The project is overseen by Josef Aschbacher of ESA's Earth Observation Base near Rome. Once the system is set up, we really have a, a very wide variety of uh, satellites and instruments that measure uh, a magnitude of parameters, really almost everything uh, which you can measure from space, from uh, land uh, parameters for flooding, for forest fires, for uh, vol volcanic eruptions, uh, damages after earthquakes, but also oil spills, uh, ocean parameters, sea surface height, uh, sea surface uh, temperatures, climate parameters, uh, air quality, uh, ice coverage, and so on. So really, uh, whatever can be measured, more or less, will be measured by this constellation of uh, Sentinel satellites, uh, which, uh, which are being built up right now. Funding for the Sentinels comes from taxpayers through the Copernicus program, formerly known as GMES. It's led by the European Commission in partnership with ESA and the European Environment Agency, and everyone will be able to enjoy the view. The data policy which was decided recently uh, is open and free, because uh, this data is also an 
article on which we can build a lot of business development, also for European companies in Europe, but also outside Europe. And this is only possible, uh, this development, if the raw data are free. It's a little bit like the navigation signal. You have a free signal from space, and then a lot of businesses uh, found it based on that on ground. The Copernicus program is already up and running, but will expand greatly in the next two years as the Sentinels launch and begin offering many terabytes of data per day. In the best case, uh, we are going down to about half a meter uh, resolution, which is quite precise. Uh, then you go to a range of about five meters resolution, where you measure different parameters, typically agricultural uh, information, agricultural fields, uh, yield predictions. Then. You go to about uh, 200 meters, 250 meters, which is used for global uh, mapping of uh, the oceans, really parameters at a global scale, uh, which of course has, have a different uh, type of users and a different, a, dif a different interest. Back in England, Javier believes the near real-time flow of Sentinel-1 satellite data will make a difference. Flood forecasting is an emerging field in science and it will grow with more timely and accurate information. With the ESA satellite, we will be able to have a vertical resolution in the order of tens of centimetres. And that is what will allow us to say that this area over here will get flooded and that area of the cricket field won't get flooded. And that will help us develop much better action plans. The Sentinel satellites may orbit 700 kilometres above our heads, but they should have a very clear effect on the ground. All year we're following the team behind the Rosetta mission as they hunt down a comet. Let's find out what's happening. Previously on Comet Hunters, Armel showed us just how much Rosetta means to the team. Come on in. Today, Jacob is deep in mission planning. My name is Jacob Urbanek. I'm a Rosetta spacecraft operations engineer and I help control the spacecraft. It's a little nerve-wracking at times. Um, you have to be uh, very, uh, you have to pay close attention to the details. The team is fantastically cohesive and we do a good job working through things one by one. The spacecraft is, is sort of the bus that carries uh, all this stuff inside of it. Uh, and those instruments are what provide us the science. We have to turn on instrument by instrument and check to make sure that, uh, that they're healthy, that they're healthy and that they're ready to go for the comet phase. Dear Rosetta, we're planning some exciting payload operations for you in the next few weeks, so please stay healthy and ready for your date with the comet. That's it for now. Next month, we move away from floods and disasters and look back at 50 years of space in Europe. See you then. <laughs>